The views and opinions expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of the staff and management of Salem Media of Hawaii. Welcome to Generations Radio, where the focus is on our seniors and their families. We are here each Saturday afternoon from 5 until 6 p.m., bringing you resourceful information with our radio team of professionals in the field of aging. Stay with us for the next one hour as we explore different ways to make life more exciting and meaningful for our extraordinary seniors. Right here on AM 690, The Answer. And now, here is our host and the publisher of Generations Magazine, Percy Ihara. Welcome to Generations Radio. I am Percy Ihara, your host here every Saturday from 5 to 6 and Sunday from 3 to 4. And as you know, Generations Magazine is out, the June-July issue featuring... The Sandwich Generation, who have three stories about baby boomers caring for their parents and actually caring for the rest of their family. But um, anyway, today we have our special guest, Helping Hands Hawaii, uh, one of Hawaii's leading nonprofits that really uh, helps with beha- provide behavioral health and human services help through our vulnerable community in Hawaii, not only seniors. And today we have uh, two guests, first James Lee uh, and also Mr. Paki Story. So James, James Lee, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank and you yeah, I mean, I've heard about Helping Hands Hawaii uh, for years, and I've always wanted to have you on. So thank you, Dorian, for uh, contacting me and uh, you know having you on. I think you guys have done a great job. And your actually your position with uh, Helping Hands Hawaii is uh, I'm the program manager uh, in the human service division at Helping Hands. And for our listeners out there that may not really know who Helping Hands Hawaii and what you folks do. Can you give us a little background on Helping Hands Hawaii? Sure. Um, we are a nonprofit social service agency. Uh, we've actually been around um, for a while. Uh, since the 40s, we were known as different really? names uh, all throughout the times, initially wow. as the Volunteer Service Bureau, um, but now Helping Hands Hawaii. Um, we as an agency provide a number of different services uh, in both human services and in behavioral health. Um, so very wide variety of services. And so really there's two major um, segments of Helping Hands Hawaii, the behavioral health side, mm-hmm. which Paki's story will cover in our second half of the show. But you're the program director more in human services, and that really covers a lot of, of programs. So give us a background if you have any stories about some of the different programs. I know you had mentioned earlier before it started that um, you have different programs. So why don't you highlight a few of them? Sure, sure. Um Probably at the forefront of the Human Services Division is the Community Clearinghouse, um, which is a donation warehouse that we operate, um, which uh, receives donations from the community. Uh, we also go out all over the island to pick up donations uh, of furniture or appliances, everyday household items. Uh, we house them at the Community Clearinghouse, um, and we give them back out to the community through a process of referral uh, free of charge. Now, that's so, right on Nimitz, right? Because That is correct. Because actually, Generation Magazine's distributor is right across the way there. And oh. I've actually been that in that building several times. Uh, but do you do pickup as well? We do. We do. Oh. Um, we have vehicles that we send out on a daily basis um, all over the island to pick up bulky furniture. Oh, really? I got a dining room table. You need a dining room table? <laughs> oh, of course. I actually have a washer and dryer. Great. I just thought about that. My wife would love you. Get out of our garage. Get out of our back room. (laughs) Please do give us a call. I I will. Um, And we'll give the number out a little bit later on. But um, so the clearinghouse, basically you you find people in need in the community and you Mm -hmm. you actually deliver that as well? Uh, We unfortunately don't do deliveries, um, but we do work with uh, over 200 community partners. And these are, you know, social service providers just like ourselves who works with the population um, and we receive referrals from them uh, to identify these families in need and they can access the clearinghouse as often as once a month um, to obtain items to help them with, you know, a variety of situations. Have you ever worked with Declutter Hawaii? Um, That's my brother's company that declutters people's homes and she's always looking for people to, that they can donate leftover furniture. They're in the magazine, by the way. Great. They've been certainly. one of our original partners in the magazine, but they have a lot of seniors they work with. Great. And so I know it's always been a chore. What do we do with our things that we don't need anymore or the seniors that are downsizing? Right. It's very important to, you know, uh, pass that on because, mm-hmm. you know, we don't want to be thrown away. Actually, I have an old TV if you need an old TV. Yeah. Please will. But anyway, so you have, uh, James, you have the Community Clearinghouse, which is great. Mm-hmm. I mean, everybody knows about uh, Salvation Army and mm-hmm. Goodwill, but Helping Hands, great, great resource here. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then um, 
Let's talk about the one seasonal program, the Ready to Learn program. Sure. It's, it's a seasonal program, so yep. it happens in what latter part of the year. Uh, well, Ready to Learn is uh, seasonal. It's we operate it annually. It's usually right around this time, uh, between May to August. Um, the main focus of the program is to provide families with school-age children who are financially struggling uh, with school supplies, um, so kids mm. can start off the school years on the right foot. Mm. Um, definitely, there's a huge needs there, and it's you know it's very important, and we really do value children's education in the community. So, if children or grandparents need supplies, mm -hmm. they would contact you? Yeah, they can either um, go through the referring process of the Clearinghouse or through one of our many referring partners, uh, be a part of uh, Ready to Learn, um, which can help your children and grandchildren with school supplies. Well, that's an interesting point. I think, I, I think that's really important with school supplies. I mean, I, I know you got to buy your scissors and your pencil and paper, mm. but that can be actually add up to a lot high cost right. every year, you know. Um, so it's, it's just summertime and you have like a school drive or something like that. Yeah. We, um, fortunately, uh, we have a lot of contributors and donors, uh, who helps us, uh, in, in conducting some of these drives and, and efforts, uh, for us to get some of these supplies to, to be able to give out. Okay. And then, um, what are some of the other programs you have? So the ready to learn is just for school supplies. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a, that's a big one. Yeah. Um, and what other, uh, I see here you have a list. Of, is you're in charge of bilingual? Yeah, bilingual access, access line? line is also one of. Um, well, it's our language access program. So mm -hmm. it's actually the largest uh, interpreter network here on Oahu. Wow. Um, so at any given time, we have interpreters uh, in the community that assist with different issues uh, of language access. Mm -hmm. um, we get requests from hospitals, law offices, courts. Uh, to assist with interpretations uh, pretty much around the clock. So does somebody have to be part of your network or have to have already, so do you have to register for your services? And uh, The bilingual access line is a fee-for-service program. Um, it's generally requested by the entity uh, that requires a service. So let's say you're somebody at the hospital and, and you need an interpreter. The hospital would be the one to request for that service, and, mm. and we would send out a dispatch of, an interpreter of, for the language that are needed, and we'll be able to assist in the issue. Wow, that's that's a, that's a great service. I'm looking at all the languages. I mean, so you have staff, or you've contracted out for the different Chukis, Korean, mm -hmm. Vietnamese, Mandarin, Chinese, and all the other Pacific Island languages. Mm -hmm. Yep, the interpreters are all are are all helping hands Hawaii staffs. Um, they are um, they function in a part time on call capacity generally, um, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, I, we covered some of the most you know, commonly spoken languages here in Hawaii, and, and it's definitely a great service. Well, that's a lot of programs you have. That's very diverse. Uh, but you have a big one every year, and, and it's the Adoptive Family. Tell, tell the public how does that work. Okay, so the Adoptive Family is also a seasonal program that we operate um, around Christmas time. Mm -hmm. And the, the core idea of the program is to bring holiday cheer to families that are in need that mm -hmm. are struggling to provide um, holiday gifts or holiday items or some sometimes just very basic, you know, yeah, also necessities. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we do so by, once again, working with our network of community partners to identifying some of these families. And we link them up with donors uh, who would want to, quote unquote, adopt a family um, and providing some of these items on their wish list. And that's that's really that's really important. It's it's. I mean, you got so many programs here. I see another one here: the emergency assistance program. Mm -hmm. The emergency assistance program um, is one of those programs that I mentioned that focuses on homelessness prevention and uh, financial assistance. So, uh, the emergency assistance program can help with a range of different issues, including past due rent, past due utility, um, first month's rent for families that are in transition. Um, but the idea is to help somebody reach um, a level of self-sufficiency so that they can move forward and, and be sustainable. Um, so yeah. you must have people that donate. Uh, I see a couple of banks here that they must donate to the program. And so when somebody needs assistance like that, uh, they just fill out an application as well? And yeah. Well, it depends on what program you're going through and what your specific needs are, and our staff will be more than happy to do that assessment mm -hmm. with you. Um, uh, there are different 
ways to qualifying for different types of services. I know here you have partnerships. You say you have partnerships with char- Catholic charities, mm-hmm. the Hawaii community um, assets statewide, and OHA. Yep. Wow, great. Um, another big one here I see here is uh, the SNAP um, program, the formerly the, the food stamp program. Yep. And that's a growing, we've had articles in the past generation magazine about the SNAP program, but mm-hmm. give our audience, because that's a really good program. Yeah. I mean, food security is certainly a big issue. In the seniors community. really big, besides housing, probably the second biggest issue. And that's right. Um, and in the SNAP outreach program, what we aim to do is making sure that um, people who are potentially able to access the program that are eligible have the tools to obtain benefits. Um, SNAP, I mean, I'm sure a lot of folks are, are familiar with the concept of SNAP um, food stamps, uh, but not everybody might know the most up-to-date information about the program, what is changing and what the income requirements are. Um, and in SNAP outreach, that's what we aim to do is to answer some of those questions, um, making sure that everybody is aware of what is required and who is eligible. And we're also happy to assist with the application process, both in obtaining benefit, but also maintaining benefit thereafter. So, mm. so I know you serve a big spectrum here of, of, of the community, but do you see a growing area for more seniors coming into your, 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 your organization? Um, we, we do, as a matter of fact. Uh, for some of these programs, especially um, in regards to public <clears throat> benefit, um, the senior population is always a, a a population that we're very concerned about um, because there are access barriers like mobility issues or, or um, language barriers that sometimes can prevent somebody who is eligible for benefits but is unable to access it. So, yeah. it's, it's a growing area. I mean, I was talking to some of the state regarding homelessness and, and as, as it grows, but I think, we, you know, with your help and other organizations helping us um, and help the homeless, but I think I was explaining to this this person that as, our, as we all get older, and a lot of people in, in the homelessness situation now are going to get older, and it, when we get mental health issues, um, Alzheimer's down the road, what do we do? I mean, you can only provide so much services, right? Right. You know, and in fact, we had Alzheimer's Association on a while back. Uh, I believe it was last month. And um, the amount of documented people with Alzheimer's is going to double in the next 10 years. Mm. It's a scary thought. It, it is, but, you know, hopefully the resources are out there and hopefully that um, people are aware of what's out there and, and know what they can access, you know, to to help with their situation. Yeah. I think, uh, um, so do you see a whole families coming in or just individuals? Uh, both. I mean, right. we, we do work with a lot of family, which includes a lot of um, population but yeah, uh, we service individuals and families. Uh, I wouldn't say one more so than the other, but uh, yeah. definitely a wide range. And is uh, people, uh, citizens with disabilities, having a having? Do you see more of that? Mm, yeah, I mean, it's it's actually it's a very typical audience um, for us folks with disabilities, uh, folks who are financially struggling, seniors, individuals, and family alike. So I see you do consultation, um, like day treatment classes, but case mm-hmm. management for for people that don't know what case management is. What what exactly can you, what was that? Would, would, would you, uh, Pocky cover that? That that might be an area that Pocky is a oh, little okay. bit more well versed in. Okay. What well, is there any need that uh, Helping Hands uh, uh, for your programs? Is there any specific needs that we can let our let our listeners know that help help you out? Uh, I think just. Besides money, of course. <laughs> but are well, there specific areas of need that you need? I think if there's one takeaway message that I want to um, spread and, and make sure that everybody has in their head is is really do seek out help. Um, a lot of the times what we see in providing services, uh, one of the biggest things that prevents people from accessing services is not because they don't qualify. It's because they think they don't qualify or they hear they somewhere think else. they don't qualify. Right. It's, it's hearsay. It's misinformation, right? right. So if... Um, somebody you know, a friend or relative, tells you, oh, you know, I hear this, then you don't qualify for the certain benefits. Um, That usually stops it right there for somebody, even though you really do need the help. Um, So one thing that we want to let everybody know is, you know, always seek help. Um, And if you need the help, seek it and determine Mm -hmm. for yourself whether or not you can receive help. Do you think sometimes they don't know about what your services and programs are? Not our program specifically, but, you know, just in general, 
but then he's like, okay. One of the reason why is I do want to be able to offer you, offer you um, a full page article in the next uh, issue to uh, let our let our readership out there know as we as as Generations Magazine grow. And as mentioned, we are statewide now through the library systems and all our doctor offices. Um, it's something that that's one of the things that when I took over the magazine five years ago, we kind of rebranded as a resource for life magazine. So mm-hmm. we want everybody to understand who Helping Hands is um, and let them know who to contact. So this is James Lee, right? Program director. Mm-hmm. But any any stories you could tell um, that you could relay on of uh, success stories that would. Oh, wow. I mean, I know you must have a ton of them. There, there are so many. But and what are some of the more common things that you see? Um, just people discovering that you know there there are <clears throat> hope and possibilities of of uh, self sustainable you know lifestyle. Um, we we work with the transient population, the, the homeless population. Is that a, a big lot. big population? Yeah, I hear a lot of. Um, I do a lot of work with SNAP outreach programs. So one of the programs that we have mentioned uh, mm-hmm. with public benefits and. Uh, yeah, a lot of the time we work with the, the homeless population and many of them just, you know, doesn't even know sometimes uh, what they can and cannot qualify for. And when they, you know, when we do set them on the path of having these benefits and then moving Mm -hmm. forward, um, to a self-sufficiency, it's a, it's an eye opener for a lot of folks. Is there income qualification at all? Yeah. For for public benefits, mm-hmm. um, generally there are income criteria. Um, are you allowed to go over that at all to give us an idea, dollar there, wise or right? Well, there is a income limit, um, but we we are very hesitant into you know holding on to those because it's it's very often case by case right. basis. Although there is an income eligibility criteria for many programs. Um, but there are also other factors that can affect somebody's eligibility beyond just looking at the numbers. So that's why, you know, we always say, find out for yourself. You might not qualify based on income, but there are other factors that are specific to you that can make you eligible. So if I want to refer somebody to, do we just call up the Helping Hands Hawaii number? Yeah. Um, you can call our general number and we can direct you based on your need. Um, depends on what type of services you're seeking. But definitely give us a call. And so they would call you up. Do they need to meet in person or do they do it online or do they need to do it on the phone? What's that application process like? Depends on your need. Um, some programs do need to do a, a more in-depth assessment, um, and that could require an in-person intake. Um, mm-hmm. But a lot of information can be assessed and go over over the phone. So asking the question is the first step. And what is your general number over there? Uh, you can I call a, us. You know, a lot of numbers here I see here. Yeah. <laughs> Which is I, good. Good. I like that. I mean, yeah. So what's the general number? Our main number is 536-7234. Okay. And so, I, I mean, for seniors, I, I, I'm i finding a lot of seniors not being able to uh, pay basic essentials like property tax, insurance, mm-hmm. lecture bill, phone bill. But do you get some of those as well, utility bills like that? Yep, yep. Pastor utility is one of the areas that um, the uh, emergency assistance program can potentially assist. Um, but, you know, through our other programs that may not directly be related to, you know, issues of utility and electric bills, um, say through the SNAP program, we can get you public benefits if you're uh, eligible and therefore in the process increasing your financial fortitude, so to speak, so mm-hmm. that you have yeah. extra money now, you know, to pay for your other bills. So it's a very full spectrum, you know, from all angles types of assistance. Yeah. I mean, you have so many programs here. I like the bilingual because I know, I know more and more uh, of our, of our, um, our visitors here are, you know, because I'm, I'm you know, seven, certain programs allowing the, some of the foreigners to stay like the Micronesian population, the Chukis population, they're coming here and we have to support them, but that's a growing population, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so I don't know if you know, but um, the June July issue has a big spreadsheet um, of our ninth annual aging in place workshop. So I'm actually on page ten and eleven, and uh, we'd love to have you guys here. It's on a Saturday though, so I'm not sure, Dorian, <laughs> if you're allowed to work Saturdays, but it's on August fifteenth. It's in the magazine there. Um, it's all day. It's about eight thirty to two thirty, two forty-five. Um, 
and you can have a booth there. We're going to have close to 70 exhibit booths, and just about everybody's going to be dealing with specifically seniors, um, but to get your name out there more, which you guys do so much work, and I'm sure there's a lot of information you probably have to lay out on your whole table of all the different <laughs> pamphlets you have, but I do want to invite you. We can, we can give you a scholarship for a free exhibit booth. Nonprofits usually pay $100. The for-profit companies pay anywhere from $250 to $550, but we'll give you a free booth there. We're going to have a lot of the other nonprofits that you guys know there, but it's going to be focused on seniors and their families. So I think Helping Hands Hawaii here, is, you guys have done a great job. So, yeah, um, we're going to take a short break, but on the second half we're going to cover um, more of the uh, more of the uh, behavioral programs with, uh, with Paki. Um, story, but yeah, so uh, go to generations808.com and, and click on the calendar where it says the Aging in Place Workshop, and the, and the worksheet um, flyer will show up with all the different um, um, presentations. We have six rooms going on at one time, so we actually have 18 presentations in the morning, and then break it off in the afternoon. We'll repeat them everything from Alzheimer's, which will be in a big room. Uh, we're going to cover legal, financial, ARP. We're going to talk about caregiving and other things. We're going to have a family uh, family room talking about active aging, senior living options, fall prevention. And then Declutter Hawaii, we'll bring you doing about declutter. That is our biggest topic of any topic we've ever done. Decluttering affects all families. And actually, Definitely. if you go to our website, uh, look at the Aging in Place uh, tab in the middle of the website. And it has actually all the videos from the last two years and of all the presentations that we videotape, because you can watch it right there, declutter, quadrupled every other presentation. Nearly 400 views, views of an hour program, half an hour, 45 minute program. Almost 400 views. I think the next most popular um, uh, presentation was, I think it was Social Security, at, I think it was only 82. So it's, it's a big, big topic here. Uh, let's go ahead and take a short break with here with Helping Hands Hawaii, and uh, we'll be right back. We will be right back with Percy Ihara from Generations Radio. If you have any questions or want to be part of our discussion, give us a call at 296 5467. That's 296 5467. This is Generations Radio on AM 690, The Answer. I was an addict from the age of 13. I finally decided it was time for a change. I walked into the Salvation Army Adult Rehabilitation Center, and that got me ready for the real world. Now, I choose to be guided by Jesus Christ, and today, I'm building a powerful and promising future free from drugs and alcohol. Please shop at the Salvation Army Family Stores. With our discounted sales, your support through your purchase helps men live a clean, sober, and productive life. Simplify your life by opening a My Social Security account. What's My Social Security? It's a secure online account that allows you immediate access to your personal social security information. During your working years, you can use My Social Security to view your Social Security statement, to check your earnings record and see estimates of the future retirement, disability, and survivor benefits you and your family may receive. If you receive benefits, you can get a benefit verification, check your benefit and payment information, change your address and phone number, and even change your direct deposit information. Open a My Social Security account today and simplify your life just visit www.socialsecurity.gov slash my account. While you're online, check out all the other things you can do at www.socialsecurity.gov. Today, more than ever, we local people are living longer than any other state in the union with more seniors, baby boomers, and caregivers. Generations Radio promotes the importance to be proactive as we all age. The radio team will focus on issues facing our seniors and their families, finding resources to navigate healthy aging along with financial, legal, and caregiving information. So join Percy E. Howard from 5 until 6 each Saturday, right here on AM 690, The Answer.
focusing on the issues facing our seniors and their families today. Here's our Generations Radio host, Percy Ihara. Okay, welcome back to Generations Radio. I'm here, Percy Ihara, publisher editor of Generations Magazine. And as you know, the June-July issue is out on the stands. And we do have uh, magazine racks downtown uh, on uh, Bishop Street by Bank of Hawaii. We're uh, by uh, Pioneer Plaza, uh, Central Pacific Bank on, on the corner of Alake and King Street. Uh, we're down by um, the post office on Richard Street. And we have racks by Down to Earth on King Street. So uh, I know those go out really fast. If they run out, uh, go to any state library, including Molokai, including University of Hawaii. Uh, to pick up a magazine, or you can go to your doctor's office, we'll have them. And if you're tech savvy, you seniors out there, um, as I know a lot of kids are, go to generations808.com, and you, you can look at all the past issues, including our first one with Kirk Matthews that was uh, in October of 2010. As well, you guys know, on page 10 of our magazine here, we have the uh, ninth annual Aging in Place Workshop at the Alamon Hotel. It runs from about 8.30 to about 2.45, 2.30. And so come early, bring a box lunch because we don't serve lunch. But we're going to have uh, six different rooms with different speakers going on all day long. And then at lunchtime, we're actually going to celebrate Social Security's birthday, 80 years of Social Security. That's amazing. So thank you to ARP who's going to be sponsoring that midday uh, break there. But we are going to cover things from what a big topic, Alzheimer's. Uh, healthy habits for healthier you, uh, nutrition and health. And then behavioral communication um, communication tips from the Alzheimer's Association. And as you know, by looking at the sandwich on our front cover, we have a story of three baby boomers taking care of their parents and their children. So thanks to Mr. Michael Yee from Ameriprise Financial talking about his situation. Uh, Pamela Ani uh, from the Alzheimer's Association talking about long-distance caregiving for her mother in West Virginia. And Lori Misaki from the island of Molokai talking about her situation there on the rural island of Molokai. So... Uh, thank you to all three of you for sharing your story and your lives for the public here. Um, but anyway, we're here with Helping Hands Hawaii. And uh, next up for our, uh, Helping Hands Hawaii is Mr. Paki Story. So welcome, Paki. Thank you, Percy. It's great to be here. Yeah. So how do you go from Patrick to Paki? Oh, that's a, that's a great <laughs> question. I get asked that a lot. I love the name. Believe though. it or not. So like about 30 years ago, uh, before I was in social services, I was um, a chef. I was working in the food in Hawaii? industry. Yeah, I was working. I was actually running a kitchen at Bellows Air Force Base. That wow. was back when the locals could eat there and stuff like that. So I was working in the kitchen with all the aunties. And uh, Auntie Myrna, um, <laughs> my name's Patrick, so she started calling me Pakalika. And then they, after a while, they just shortened it to Paki. And then uh, somebody told me that once the aunties give you a name, you got to keep it for life. It's it sticks. Oh it. yeah. So, uh, otherwise, you won't so be in that kitchen since anymore. Then. That's right. Well, yeah. I love the name. It's, it's yeah. fast. It's short. And I, I have a name. My purse is. Come on, I'm used to the fun, unusual, but great name. So, so how, um, Paki, how long have you been at Helping Hands Hawaii now? I've been at oh. Helping Hands Hawaii um, since November, but I've been involved in the state in in uh, this kind of work for a long time. Oh, good for you. Yeah. And so Helping Hands Hawaii, James Lee was on here earlier talking about the different programs. I mean, you guys do a lot of work. I'm, I'm really impressed. And I'm hoping to get that article from you guys for our August, September issue, because that's going to be the largest issue that we do every year. That will be distributed at the Senior Fair, which is the last weekend in September. So we'll actually physically deliver 5,000 copies extra every, that, 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 that Senior Fair. So uh, if you can do that. So behavioral... Uh, programs. Yeah. Um, when we say behavior, what do you mean by that? I mean, so you see, when we behavioral health is kind of a broad um, right. term. Usually, it's referring to problems with mental or emotional health um, and substance abuse, which is obviously a big issue here in uh, in Hawaii. And our so we have some behavioral health programs that service um, folks that have severe mental illness. And um, and or substance abuse problems. And so I, I know you mentioned uh, uh, you had, you're most on Oahu, but you're on the neighbor island as well, right? Right. We have uh, community-based case management and care coordination services in Hilo, Hawaii. And we also have uh, repay services, which th maybe not technically a behavioral health problem. A lot of the a lot of our consumers, the people we service there, do have mental health um, issues. And that's basically where 
the state or social security decides that you're not, you can't necessarily <clears throat> take care of your own mm. finances. So you need somebody that's going to act as a representative in your best interest. Oh, you're supposed help to do you. that. Yeah, we do that. That's one of our, that's one of our big programs. Too. Really? Yeah. Well, good to know because for, as you know, the senior population, they're very vulnerable and we, we, we get calls right. from people that the children live on the mainland yeah. Uh, they come back as much as they can, which is very little sometimes, and they need definitely help. And huh. the the great thing about the the rep payee program is that a lot of our a lot of the folks that are part of that program also have um, <clears throat> mental health problems, so they're sure. so they're receiving case management services either with us or with another agency. But it really is a a great way to ensure that somebody's watching the till, you know, so that people aren't taking advantage of these folks and. And that decisions, financial mm-hmm. decisions, are being made in their best interest with with them oh. and their families. And do you do this on, in, in Hilo as as well on neighbor islands? We don't do rep pay in Hilo, but we do rep pay services on Kauai. Oh, okay, because we're we're growing on the Big Island Hilo. I guess we distribute all the KTA stores, and uh, I know we're getting a great following over there. Thanks to Derek Carisu uh, over KTA stores. So thank you very much. Um, but do you see a, 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 a higher percentage or a lower percentage when it comes to seniors or as a growing area? Sure, it is a growing area. And and really, you know, a, any percentage of seniors is, is really hard um, and unacceptable, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, the times they keep. Um, they're hard on the, they're hard on everybody and they're particularly hard on the most vulnerable population seniors among, among them. I'd say probably the oldest folk that we have in our, in uh, case management programs, about 76, 77, mm. like that. And then in, uh, some of our, we have a program that works with chronically homeless people. And there we see, you know, we, we see, uh, we outreach to folks that are sixties and seventies and, you know, we see folks there sometimes elderly that have been homeless for a long, long time. Do you see a lot big homeless population on a big island though? I, I heard there's a big po- homeless population on it. Up you know, the whole area. I was going to say, I lived on the, uh, my wife and I lived on the Big Island for about 10 years. Uh-huh. And um, there is a huge population down there, Pahoa, Puna. Puna district. Um, and <clears throat> especially a lot of Vietnam era veterans and other veterans in particular. Yeah. Uh, because it's a, it's really isolated. They can live there off the grid. They come into town sometimes um, for supplies. And they're not, you know, and that's a really vulnerable population as well and they're, and sometimes they're not they have a, a stigma associated with asking for right. help or getting help so well yeah. i hear a lot of them are uh, there specifically because they can live off the grid easier unnoticed and you know the land is some people own 20 30 acres yeah. they don't even know if anybody's living on their lot sure. when we were up there doing our big island issue last year when the lava flow started out we went up to the command center up there and i was talking to um, they did a great job um, for that area when they, when they knew the lava flow might hit the town, that they had all the different, different agencies up in that, that uh, Pahoa Community Park there. And I was talking to one of the homeless um, state workers, and she said, huge population over there. Huge. That's been my experience as well. Yeah. I think one of the differences, you know, there's, there's certainly a large unseen homeless population mm-hmm. on Oahu, too. Right. Um, you know, but that's one of the distinctions on the Big Island, the homeless population. You don't see them like you do here, um, but they they are there in numbers too. Yeah, they're in the, they're in the woods, they're yeah. out in the boonies out there. So it's, yeah. I know because, like I said, um, that might be one of the things you can cover because we we have so much good coverage on the Big Island. Um, as as well in Kauai, uh, we have it on our, through the state libraries over there. Uh, in this June July issue, we actually have an article about the pre- prescription problem for seniors and uh in fact edgy lee and mark cohen uh co-produced a documentary on prescription problem here in hawaii and it's a huge huge problem so um so in regards to behavioral behavioral health you have day treatment group interventions right can you explain a bit more in detail what that what that is so the so the um the uh, and intensive outpatient groups um those are really groups that are specifically geared towards people with mental health and or, or substance abuse um, problems. So a mm-hmm. lot of it is um, focuses on developing skills so that they can manage either their symptoms or um, stay in recovery if they're in recovery. Um, also social skills, financial skills. Mostly a lot of what we teach in those in those classes though is coping skills too, mm. because it, especially if somebody has 
um, a mental illness and a substance abuse problem. You know, I've been in this, I've been in this field a long time and like 25 years ago when I was starting out, if you had somebody that had substance abuse issues and mental health <laughs> issues, you almost had to, you had to make a diagnosis. You had to decide which one is primary. Mm. You know, that was the old days and it's changed a lot <laughs> since then. And we now realize that they, they interact, they're entwined, they're like mm-hmm. braided, you know, so you have to, you have to deliver services to both of those at the same time. And so a lot of our folks that have mental health issues and also substance abuse issues, they may have started using early, 12, 13, 14 years old. And if you think about it, look back on your own life and coming up through puberty, through adolescence, just the the things we go through. Um, And if you have a family that supports you or elders or mentors, you know, they help you with that. But if you don't have anyone, if you're isolating yourself, you're depressed, um, what happens is you wind up using the you wind up using the the alcohol or the drug as the coping skill, and as you grow your development stunts, and that coping skill winds up being the only coping skill or the main coping skill that you have. So, a lot of times we get people that have never been in recovery and never been sober, and they and especially if they have a mental health problem too. Now, we're asking them to not take the one thing that's been helping them cope mm-hmm. in their life. And if you don't give them other coping skills to deal with emotions, to deal with anger, to deal with frustration, they're they going to be relapse. really, yeah. That's why there's such a high relapse rate for, mm. for addictions. That's a very good point. So do they come into your facility or do you go out to them? Well, a, a couple of different ways. For our, for our community-based case management programs, most of, those, most of those folks are referred to us through either through the adult mental health division of the state or mm-hmm. through third-party um, MedQuest insurance. Sure. And usually what happens for people that are getting those services for the first time, they'll have some kind of a, um, some, some kind of a break or some kind of a, you know, a bad situation, crisis situation happen. They might wind up mm-hmm. e- either at the Queens hospital or another hospital. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they'll, they'll, that's when they'll refer them to us so that we can help provide services after that. So is this on a continual basis, or is there like a time frame where they can reach? Because obviously homelessness has been around for a while, but it continues to grow, and it's hard to get them back on the streets. Right. You know? So um, in terms of the services, there as long as they as long as they meet the the diagnostic criteria and need the services, um, we provide them. So we have some folks that have been receiving services for a long time, but there's also some folks that. Uh, um, they receive services for you know maybe a, a less of a time. There was one gentleman not too long ago who came into us with mental health problems and also substance abuse problems. We helped him stabilize his mental health. He did a lot of the work. He went to a treatment facility, got treatment for his uh, for his addictions, and once the addiction issues were addressed, then he was able to more appropriately address the the mental health problems and work with some of his. Um, symptoms and mm-hmm. medications and stuff like that. And he wound up being, you know, going through um, a peer mentoring program mm. and becoming a support for other folks in the community. He dropped off of services a while ago because he had, because the kind of support services that we put in place for the people that are able to, one of our goals is to help them develop those own supports, either through family, sure. community, church. Um, so in a way, we'd love to put ourselves out of a job for the individuals that we serve and still be there to provide those services for, for yeah. all the people in the community that need them. I'm sure. Is there an income qualification on your programs? Well, most of the, most of the people receiving um, services are the community-based case management and care coordination. Those are through MedQuest. So you would have to, okay. so the um, application is filed to DHS and then they're mm-hmm. the ones that refer them to the, um, to the, the gateway for that, and then they refer the services to uh-huh. us. Yeah. Now, is that MedQuest? Uh, I understand they're changing their name. Is that correct? Or are they changing their name? Or um, they right. They combine yeah. the QXA I'm, program. I, I know may get in trouble for no, going. No, no, that's okay. That's fine. I mean, I, um, we had them on the, the show. Elder, elderly, online. blind, and disabled. Yeah, I think the QX, that's the, the QXA term. program. Yeah. Right. That's right. Ah, I, I, they, we had them on the <laughs> right. show. Don't worry about it. No, no, I, I, I know. Kinda, I know. Like, we all, but that's a good reminder for me, though, that that's we're supposed to be using those. They get confused too. Don't worry about that. Um, but. And then, so for people that don't know what rep payee mean, what does that mean? And what does that cost? Right. So the rep payee, um, <clears throat> that is where, like I said, we're financially responsible for 
uh, uh, for the financial benefits, usually Social Security or Social Security mm-hmm. Disability benefits. <clears throat> and we, that's a contract either through a contract with the state or we do have some folks that they they pay, you know, they pay the fee for service themselves. So it's all individual based. Um, but it's just for their finances, not like for property or anything like that. Right. It's usually it's not like a full usually, guard, uh, conservator. It's not a, you're not really a conservator, right? We're, um, somebody may have a conservator, and as part of their conservatorship, they need representative pay services. Okay. Whether that's sometimes the conservator will do that, sometimes a family member will do that, and sometimes the conservator will say, I can't do this. Mm. We need to, to work with the agency that provides this service. And basically, mm. it's, it involves working with the individual, working with the conservator, working with the case manager, who's ever involved, and coming up with a budget that's um, realistic, um, it's more like and, daily money management, more so. Yeah, so we pay the bills, um, and like that, pay the rent, pay the electric bill. Okay, no, that's really good. All of that stuff. We're we're seeing a growing need of that, and I know a couple of people that do daily money management, so it's very yeah. important. But it, there is no fee, or is there a small fee for this? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the fee is, but I believe the fee, a lot of it is covered through the state program. Good. But yeah. I'm not 100 percent sure. I'm no, so I have to that's check. fine. Yeah. I, I think if anything, anything people just need to give them, give you guys a call. Right. Um, I know you have this here a special program, the Hawaii Pathways Project. Give us a yeah. background on that project and what you folks do for that. Great. The, you know, we love the Hawaii Pathways Project, and so our our project is actually part of the state vision, um, Hale O Malama, which is started I think around 2014, 2013 mm-hmm. to end homelessness. Um, at the so it's a combination of federal, state, mm-hmm. um, city, county. Our funding is primarily through SAMHSA. We have a three-year SAMHSA Substance Abuse Mental Health Administration Federal, which is administered through the state of Hawaii um, Alcohol and Drug Abuse Division, and it's a three-year demonstration grant for us to work with the um, the most vulnerable, the chronically homeless. Uh, people with substance abuse pro- um, problems. And the thing that's exciting about the Pathways program, like I said, I've been in this field for a long time, and the conventional wisdom for years and years and years has always been, let's find somebody that's homeless, we'll stabilize them, we'll give them treatment if they need alcohol, drug treatment, we'll give them medications if they need medications, if they need other services, we can, medical services, we can help them get their medical stuff. And it's almost like, making them or helping them get stable enough so that they can be put in housing and then keep the housing, right? Um, The problem with that is that there's always going to be a lot of people that never get stable enough to to make it, and so they stay homeless, right? This this model turns that on its ear, and what it says is that we have have the belief, uh, and it's backed up by research and numbers too, that if you give if you give people housing first, that they'll stabilize in the housing. And as they become more stable because of the housing, then they'll be, um, they'll be motivated to, to start to use some of those other services that people uh, sometimes decide to use to help them. So, uh, so our approach is part of the national model of housing first, Mm -hmm. which means we give people the housing and it's not like warehouse housing or, um, you know, all in one place. It's, it's what we call scattered site housing. So it's really embedded in the community so that people don't feel so stigmatized. Because mm-hmm. if you're in like public housing, serving mentally ill, you're, everybody knows where you are, right? But if you're in scattered site community housing, that means that you're a part of the community. And also what we know from the research is that if people are integrated into a community, they, they tend to stay healthier too. So we take people, they might still be having troubles or struggles with their mental illness, with their alcohol and drug use, and we help put them in the housing. And then we provide intensive wraparound support services with that. One of the great things is that we partner with um, Catholic Charities specifically for this grant. And so it's kind of a, a, a great model for us in collaboration. You know, this is kind of new, too, in our community uh, and it's a great way for agencies to work together in a way that we haven't been able to do before, and uh, and we're just really happy with the successes that we're happy that we're we're having. You know, if you can imagine giving helping somebody to achieve housing that's been on the streets for 
three years, four years, 10 years, 12 years. You know, that's I mean, a long time yeah, to be on the street. A long time. I remember I was doing, uh, um, I went out to Wainai to do uh, just an assessment, meet with somebody, with one of our workers. And we're talking to the guy and uh, he's like, you know, at one point he's crying. Uh, and he says, you guys are lying to me. You know, I know you're lying to me. I've done this before with four or five people before. Everybody says they're going to help. Nobody ever helps. Um, why do you guys come here? Why do you guys keep lying like that? And, you know, and, uh, and we were able to help him get into, get into housing. Wow. And that's, that's, um, that's amazing. Well, if you can help one person, that's a great start. But I know you, you help many, many more. I think one of the needs, and I love Catholic Charities, by the way, and they do a lot of stuff for the senior programs. Um, but I, you can't do it on your own. I know you work at grants, you do donations, yeah. but I, how many more, how many, I mean, what's one of volunteer positions that you're looking for? I know, I know you always need volunteers, right? Yeah, we need all, we do need all kinds of volunteers, and we are, especially for the clearinghouse and stuff like that. But we, uh, um, we have lots of need for volunteers. We also have need for, you know, materials too, like for, especially for our housing program, that, that um, pathways program. If you can imagine, we take somebody that's been ho- homeless for a long time. Now we put them in an apartment. We don't want them to just have an apartment. We want them to have a home. So that takes, you know, it takes a, <clears throat> a, a dish rack, dishes, a coffee maker. I got a that. TV, I got all that. You know, I just ran a, in my a house. mop, a bucket, paper towels, that. all the stuff that you, <laughs> you know, toothpaste. My Super. wife's gonna love you, Rocky. <laughs> My wife's gonna love you. We have a lot of stuff. I built. We yeah. have so much stuff in our house that I had to. I had yeah. to build, build two right. big storage bins outside to put everything in there. Yeah. But I think we got to get it out of the house. But we have a dining room table that we hardly ever use. Um, like I said, so uh, Dorian, you have my phone number there. But we're here with uh, Pocky's story. So uh, when it comes to volunteers, there, you want me to give this number out, or you want to give the general number out? The general, general number? number, yeah. Okay, you know that off the top of your head? Otherwise, I have that. Uh, it's 536-7234. And um, like in any any nonprofit, uh, the Helping Hands Hawaii needs your help. And I know there's a lot of seniors out there that yep. and baby boomers that are retiring that that are looking for options, looking for right. things to do. And I think it's it's a great, you got a great organization to step up. So listen, what can we do? What can we donate? Uh, connect, please connect with Declutter Hawaii because I know they have a lot of uh, resources as well. Cynthia Goya, my niece, actually runs the company Great for my brother, Danny Hara. So I think it's great. But for volunteers out there, um, uh, do you need daytime, nighttime? Do you need uh, linguists? I mean, people that speak different languages? What kind, what kind of volunteers? Usually uh, daytime, um, yeah. And we're, you know, we do have a lot of people that work on our um bilingual access line too. And a lot of the folks that work on those that provide those services are very part time too. So yeah. as needed. So if somebody has those capabilities, we sure would love to talk to them too. Okay. So when we get off air, Dorian, I'm going to give you my address so you can have the, the now you do, I'll do pickups. Okay. That's great. Um, anyway, helping hands Hawaii. Thank you so much. I appreciate this. Uh, I did want to go over the June, July issue. Uh, just give you an idea of some of the stories in there. Like I said, we're going to cover three families. Uh, Mr. Michael Yi, a certified financial advisor, talking about d- dealing with his his own mother who uh, had strokes and had a heart attack, lives by herself while he's taking care of his two kids. Uh, and then you have um, um, Pamela Ani from the Alzheimer's Association telling her story about her family that dealt with long-term caregiving with her mother that was in West Virginia. And then Lori Misaki from the Misaki family in Molokai dealing with Alzheimer's, who both her parents had Alzheimer's. And so uh, we love you, Lori. Um, but like I said, on August 15th is the ninth annual Aging in Place workshop. Uh, thanks to the Alzheimer's Association, they will be uh, highlighting three major topics on Alzheimer's, from caregiving to behavioral care. Uh, issues, communi- communication tips, and how to eat nutritionally. Because unfortunately, as you guys all know, Alzheimer's, you can't stop it or slow it down, nor diagnose it ahead of time. Um, so I think the only best bet is to stay healthy. And uh, Dr. Corey Liao will be uh, doing a presentation on that. Uh, the legal financial room, Mr. Michael Yee, be- Michael Yee, we talk about long-term care, how to finance that, and Mr. Stephen Yim, on estate planning. I'll be doing a presentation on aging in place. Um, 
And then thanks to ARP, who'll be uh, doing a presentation on uh, how to prepare for care. Uh, also, how to handle family conversations with care. And in the home modification, aging in, in your home uh, uh, segment. Uh, David Nakamayejo, we're talking about fall prevention. Uh, Diane Kadena, our personal trainer in our magazine, will talk about active aging. And then uh, Trisha Madaris from the Plaza Assisted Living will be talking about senior living options. And that's a good one because they're going to talk about all the different um, retirement communities, whether you buy into it like Arcadia 15 Craigside or Pohainani or the Plaza or Hawaii Kai. She'll cover all of that. As always, Social Security Administration will be at the present at the conference along with uh, Martha Clopin on Medicare. And then Cassandra Stewart will be talking about Medicaid, um, the QXA program, also Medicaid for long-term care. Uh, my niece, as, as I told you, Cynthia Arnold will be talking about decluttering and age in place gracefully. Uh, she got married, by the way, so it's not Goya, it's, it's uh, Arnold. Uh, navigating long-term care, the options by Hope Young from Kukua Care. And one of my favorites, Dr. Shintani. We're talking about healthy aging and seven tips to reverse aging. So um, that's really a good one. Uh, I actually took his 10-day course, and I did lose a few pounds, but I eat definitely healthier. Um, thanks to our sponsors, Mahalo Mortgage, of course, KHON2 Elderhood Project. Hopefully, Ron Mizutani will be there. Uh, Vacations Hawaii will be giving away a vacation to Las Vegas, uh, which would be great. Uh, GetToInsurance.com, that specializes in Medicare. Keller Williams, the Plaza Assisted Living, ARP Hawaii, Cardin Outreach, and of course, Declutter Hawaii. So thanks to all our sponsors. As well, we have an article in here about uh, the sandwich generation, a funny little story by Kirk Matthews and his wife, Linda Koble. And then lastly, we're going to talk about, well, not lastly, uh, Dr. Dennis Nagata talking about um, all your, how do you restore your, your teeth and everything. Uh, my doctor, Malcolm Ng, talking about uh, how to save your vision. Did you know the number one line item reimbursement line item is cataract surgery that is performed by any procedure for seniors? Yes, my parents got them. My both my parents got them. Hopefully, I get it when I'm 65. So, anyway, so thanks to Dr. Malcolm Ng, one of my favorite people in the world is Joan Packer, 94 years old, no medication, no arthritis, and that's the reason why she's the why I work out. And Diane Kandina, the personal trainer, uh, who I work out with as well. Um, thanks to Straub, talking about how to transition out of the hospital into your home, which is very, very important. Um, if you haven't seen a movie already, Still Alice is out playing. Uh, it's all about Alzheimer's, which is a great, uh, great movie. Just bring a box of tissue, that's all. Um, and then Eileen Phillips from Attention Plus will talk about where do caregivers go to find help. Very important because we're seeing a slow growth in the amount of caregivers passing away before the person they're caring for. So it's very important. Um, and of course, the five tips for seniors and son safety. Uh, our local attorneys, uh, Michael, uh, Stephen Yim and Scott Mukulakani will be very important to uh, read up on. And then uh, Pamela Cunningham talking about the state health insurance program, uh, the tips on health, to navigate healthcare systems. And then lastly, there's some workshops by Christina Laney, uh, a realtor, talking about aging in place and all the different issues of medical and healthcare options. So thanks again, uh, James Lee and uh, Paki Story. Thank you very much from Healthy Hands Hawaii. Again, the phone number, 536-7234. Uh, do you guys have a website? Helpinghands.org. Great, great, great. So thank you very much. We're here every Saturday, Saturdays from 5 to 6, Sundays from 3 to 4. As well, you can go to our website, Generation.